So every scratch DJ is familiar with the sound. Oh, this stuff is really scratch. And for those of you who don't know, it came from an artist named Fab Five Freddy on his record called Change the Beat, and it was at the end of the track on the B side of the record. Scratching with that sample was popularized by Grand Mixer DXT's Grammy Awards performance. And the sound was created using a Roland vocoder. But have you ever wondered, could you make a customized scratch sample that sounds similar to how Ah and Fresh sound like? Kind of like this. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do using Ableton Live. But first, let me show you where DJs can get their music from. Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. You can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJYEARLY and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. All right, so we have Ableton 11 open here and we have our sample that I recorded earlier. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. And he's not even a DJ. And I use Audacity to record it. Um, we can use Ableton to record it if you wanted to. The only reason why I use Audacity is because when I'm recording this video, I'm using Audacity to record this microphone. But um, as soon as you drag it in, if you have the warp enabled, you want to unselect warp so that way the file, the clip plays back in the time, in the time frame that it was recorded. It's not modified. You want it exactly how you recorded it. And one of the things that I do is if you look right here, it looks like the beginning of ah comes in a little softly. You can see like the volume um, coming in in an angle. Ah. So there's like a really soft attack, like ah, instead of ah. So I want to make that a lot more abrupt where I want the ah sample to be on one side and I want complete silence because when I'm scratching that, I want it nice and tight when I'm doing my chirps, my orbits. So I want it to sound like this. Ah, ah. Okay. And we're going to listen to the whole thing. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. And he's not even a DJ. Now there's some unwanted noise here and we can just go ahead and delete that. J. And uh, we'll get rid of the rest of that and we'll bring this all the way to the front. Ah! Okay. Now, in my effects for the track, as you can see, I already have a preset template that I saved to create the autumn fresh sound, but we're going to show you how to do, how to create this one by one 
one effect at a time. So I started with a glue compressor. So I'm going to enable this. And the settings that I had was, I have my attack all the way down. And I had a pretty moderate release at 0.4. And my ratio is at four. And the reason why we do this, I want a, I don't want any attack to be there. I want the compressor to come in right away so that there's no spikes in my samples. So like, ah, it doesn't have a weird spike at the end. It just starts. I'm actually killing any transients it might create by having an attack that goes in a little deeper. And then I want to release that releases right away so that everything is back to normal. So I want my awe as smooth as possible. Uh, one to four ratio is usually what I prefer it in. And the way I figure out my threshold is, let's take makeup all the way down. I'll start with a threshold of zero and makeup all the way to zero. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. And he's not even a DJ. And what I want to do is I want it to dance around five. Not so much below or above five, but somewhere where it averages out at five. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. And he's not even a DJ. I like that right there. And I'm going to increase the makeup gain, which is basically the, the volume after the compression. And set it to around five. And I'm going to have a dry wet of about 70... 5%. What that does is it brings brings back the uncompressed signal. So you kind of have what's called a dual compression and you get a little bit of the transients back, but just a little bit because we're only doing about 75% of the compression open with 25% of the original signal in there. So you just get a little bit more uh, pronunciation of the voice. The next thing that we added was a vocorder. And uh, what we had here was we have enhance toggled on and we have this set to noise which is the default and we have this xy pad all the way to the top right the univoice set to negative 16 db the depth set to 111 percent attack at 31 0.6 milliseconds release is at 135 milliseconds and the format i have it at 2.6 what the format is is that it changes like the vocal tone so that you have a higher pitch voice without changing the actual note if it was a note so it could actually make your voice sound a little higher without changing the overall notation of the voice to go up now we're not dealing with notes this is just dialogue but that's what the format is you can make somebody sound like darth vader without changing the cadence of their voice so this is what it sounds like in these settings ah, this stuff is really fresh and he's not even a dj all right one thing about these settings is that this is not a rigid this is how your settings should be you can play with them to shape the overall sound and don't be afraid to do that that's part of the creativity of this process now it sounds like to me that the sound is getting gated like there's quiet parts that are just being completely muted so what i'm going to do is i'm going to push the makeup gain from the glue compressor to increase the volume going into the vocoder Is really fresh, and he's not even a DJ. Okay, I kind of like that. Now, the next thing I added was an EQ8. I took a really steep roll off here, and at about a hundred hertz, I did a roll off. And what that does is it cleans up all the low end noise that we don't really need in there. So I'm gonna put this back to neutral. This is what it sounded like before. This stuff you is can see all that. Really and we're going to roll that off at about 100 hertz. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. That way, all that unwanted noise from, from vibrations or just random noises coming from my voice are all cleaned up. Now, on the higher end, this is totally optional, but I like to add a high shelf that lowers the treble at around three to five kilohertz. And what this does is it cleans up the top end 
makes it sound a little lo-fi and almost makes it sound like it was recorded or is being played back on vinyl. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. This is before. My favorite battle records are actually the ones where they lowered the treble on the A sample, and it sounds so much smoother, and it's not so harsh. There in Serato, the scratch algorithm can sometimes be so harsh, especially when you're scratching fast, that having a filtered off high end on the sample actually makes it a lot smoother, and it makes the mid range more pronounced when you're doing your cuts, and this is something that I like to put there. This stuff is really fresh. The next thing I'm going to do is I put in a utility. And what this is for is the utility effect actually allows you to switch it to mono. Now, if you notice so far, the vocoder sounds really, really wide. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. Ah. There's a stereo image depth to it. And that's all fine and all. If you like that effect, you can keep it. But what I like to do is actually make it mono because the original ah and fresh sample, that whole phrase was in mono. And when you're scratching, you don't want your scratching overpowering <laughs> the imaging of the instrumental or the song that you're scratching over. Sometimes that can happen. Your scratching sounds like it's coming from everywhere, while the song might be a little bit more conservative on the imaging and it's coming from the center. And it's a weird, it might be desirable if you find a creative way to execute it. But when you're scratching a sample, kind of like a guitar solo lead, before you apply effects that might image the sound, having it dead center is probably the best because it cuts through the mix and it sounds like it's something that's coming in. So ah, this stuff is really fresh versus ah, this stuff is really fresh. And just a reminder, you could do this at the vocoder as well. Like there's a mono and stereo button. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. And then mono here. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. All right. And the last thing I do is I bring in a limiter and we're going to bring this back to zero. And what I want it to do is I want it to just simply kiss the limiter. Just start touching it where it's just slowly tapping in. And here's what that looks like. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. Maybe just a little bit more. Ah, this stuff is really fresh. And he's not even a DJ. And with the limiter hitting like that, that means that your vocal sample is going to hit all the way to the top, right at zero dB. So when you bring it in, the sample is as loud as it could possibly be. In fact, you might even have to turn it down when you bring it into your DJ software or your DJ gear. So as you can see, this isn't really, really hard to build, and it's actually pretty simple. And you can play with all these parameters and tweak and shape the sound to your liking. In fact, I don't think my... Example here sounds exactly like Fab Five Freddy's. It, fresh. especially my fresh, that the original fresh had like sort of a fresh <laughs> sound to it. And mine's a little bit more, a little dimmer, fresh. a little slower too. In fact, I wish I had the original recording before the vocoder, but I guess that's something we'll never ever see in reality. But feel free to play around with that and see if you could come up with your fresh, <laughs> your own fresh customized samples with the white noise vocoder using phrases and words that you record. And one of the cool things is I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro. I even found that if I record using just the mic on my laptop, it still sounds pretty good. The vocoder kind of like cleans up any other noise that the mic might pick up. It's pretty cool how that works because there's something that's gating the, the noise in the background. And while I am going to give you guys this preset file that I created, 
I highly encourage that you just follow the tutorial and build this yourself because you'll get to know your tools in Ableton a lot better and you'll learn and become more comfortable tweaking these tools to shape your own custom sound. All right, well, if you have any questions, comments, or anything to add about this topic we talked about today, please leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new that I didn't cover in this video. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. If you're interested in purchasing the DJ gear that we showed you in this video earlier, be sure to use the product links. The links are from Zounds. Zounds has one of the best payment plan programs that you can find online. It's one of the easiest to qualify for. So if you're ready to pick this up today, use the links from Zounds. Don't forget to follow me on my Twitch channel where I do my live stream mix shows on. I like to switch up the different DJ gear that I talk about on my YouTube channel so you can see it live in action if you're deciding on picking them up. So follow me on my Twitch where you can find that. All right, really appreciate you for watching. Thanks, take care, stay healthy. The force is with you always.